everyone, and welcome to one of the greatest games to ever be made, Banjo-Kazooie on a Nintendo 64 created by Rare. I am the Sheep of Sheep and Dane, and today we're doing an LP of this game, and it is... It is amazing, it's a brilliant collectathon platformer that's pretty much one of the major reasons to own an N64 back in the day. <laughs> and it has, it's brilliant, it, this game is just flat out brilliant. But first things first, choose a language, I'm obviously talking in English. Bonjour! No, English. <laughs> I don't know any Dutch words, so I can't say anything in Dutch. Alright, so first things first, let's choose a save slot. Um. 10 hours, 86 jiggies, 8 hours, 53... I'm trying to remember which one is the... I had a certain recording for the herd columns going, I'm pretty sure this isn't it, so I'll delete this one. Yes. Yes, I'm sure. Yes. Dear God. Alright, let's go. Now I'm going to be talking through the cutscenes in this one because the cutscenes primarily exist of ah, 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 or uh, uh, uh. you know it's just sound effects like that but oh look at this ominous looking lair I wonder who lives inside but uh, this game is just one of the greatest greatest things if you have if you never played this game when you were when you were a child you have missed out good sir by this game and here's Grunty the witch this game's enemy, if you will. Now, this might be sad to admit, but when I was a when I was a wee young lad, and uh, I used to play this game, she used to scare the ever living crap out of me. I'm not even joking. But she's a very she's a friggin' genius. What can I say? And she's talking to a cauldron because you know. But yeah, as you can tell, the plot of this game is basically the same plot of as. I can't remember, is it? I think it might be Snow White. Oh no, she's better looking at me, I'm gonna kill her! You know, that sort of thing. But, this this game, though it's though it's very... It, it's hilarious. You'll, you'll see what I mean later on, but it is a really hilarious game. And, it's one of the it's one of the primary things for that I see shouted out Rawa, and they ruined it with nuts and bolts. Although Banjo Kazooie Nuts and Bolts is a good game in its own right, it's just not this this game and the sequel had such a big they were so good platformers that basically they've gone to the point now that need, I don't think Rare will ever surpass them. But uh, then again, Rare won't anyway these days. Rare have done nothing but bloody Connect games. So here, look at this, you Connect. <laughs> Seriously, horrible games. But yeah, that's uh, that's Tootie. She only appears in this game for some reason. No idea why. And there is the big bear himself, Banjo, the main character. You might be wondering, who's this Kasui fellow? Well, the speak of the devil. Yes, yes, we'll wake up in a minute, Kazooie. Don't worry, don't worry. Gotta let the plot take place. Oh yeah, by the way, the music in this game is up there. The, this has one of the greatest game soundtracks of all time. I mean, it's phenomenal. Yes, because Banjo is really a giant green thing that rides on broomsticks bottles. I know you're a mole, but seriously, how you have better eyesight than that? That's bottles, by the way. <laughs> Come to me, my little pretty. He'll soon be ugly. Oh, what a pity! Oh god, shit is take. Shit has got real outside. Banjo, wake up! What are you doing? Go and scratch and bite my little bear. You'll soon be needing bigger underwear. <laughs> I love this. I love this. The dialogue in this game is fantastic. Come on, Banjo, wake up. <sighs> what do you want, Kazooie? Let's get outside! There's trouble! And now, quite possibly one of the biggest games ever begins. Now this is going to be a very major project of mine purely because this is a very big game. This, arguably, this is one of the my favourite games that I've ever played. And the basic controls of this game are analog stick move and C-stick. C-stick? There's no stick. 
I'm playing Sonic N64. And uh, the C buttons control the camera. Now I am choosing the N64 version over the Xbox version because I prefer the controller. That's the main reason. And plus you get to see all the glorious blurriness that I used to play with. Anyway, let's move onwards, see what's going on. Hey, Bottles Buddy, let me know what's happening. You can hold down the A button as well as speed up attacks, which I'm going to be doing for the most part. I'm Mario, and this is my buddy, Kazooie. <laughs> it's a bird, have you not seen them? Oh, shit just hit the fan. But, um, yeah, this is basically the generic plot of the game now. Your sister's been kidnapped. It's a generic Mario 64 Mario Brothers plot. But I, I like it, I like it. They do something different with this, which I love. Actually, that's the thing That's the thing about a lot of Rare games. They're never usually original in their concepts. But what the games themselves, they usually tend to surpass the concept they were originally taken off of. It's amazing. Anyway, no, I, I don't want a tutorial. I already know what we're doing. Yeah, you'll give the basic moves, thank you very much. Okay, go to the top of Spire Modding. Right, so basically now we've got the basic moves. We got if you pull the Z button you'll crouch, you push a B button while holding Z, you'll do a speak breaker attack. Hold down Z and push the A button to do a high jump. Uh B button on its own does attack. B button while running does that attack. A button and then B button does that attack. And um I think that's all the moves we get right now at the beginning. There are more oh Yep, that's all the moves at this point. There are more we get later on, but first things first, we're gonna go up on top of Banjo's house because there's a fancy dancy extra life up here. Duh! -huh. And the extra life talks to you because, as you know, everything does. The cutesy artwork, everything in this game is brilliant. Oh. Ah, uh, the only thing I'm dreading is getting. I, I'm tr I'm gonna try a name for 100%, but the thing I'm dreading is. The notes. I am horrible at collecting the notes in a certain level. Tick tock clock. <clears throat> so, it's gonna be very awkward. Now, this by year is a honeycomb piece. You get enough of these, you'll get an extra. you get an extra health bar point. Which, uh, it's not required, but it's nice to have. I'm gonna be getting all the ones in this area. I think you got just enough in Spire Mounting to increase your health bar by one, so. No worries, and as you can tell, they are those are vegetables, folks. They are vegetables, bumps and about. Don't worry about them, they can't really do anything to you. They're your gen general practice mooks. Now, if we go behind this waterfall, we get another extra life. Don't worry, this game isn't going to throw extra lives at us, I just know where these few are. To be honest, later on in the game, I might, get, I might have some issue finding a couple of things, because it's a brilliant game, yes. No, I'm not the best at it, though. Now one of these trees, I, that's the tree, you can climb up the trees by jumping into them and uh, if you do a high jump on this particular tree, by here, well you can just do a normal jump. There we go, another yarny home piece, far the taking. But yeah, this area is spiral mounting, it's one, it's, obviously it's the first area of the game, it's going to be very easy. Now swimming controls, B button swims and the A, a button when you're underwater goes slow, B button goes fast. Never use the A button unless you really need to turn tight corners. Also, you can, um... If you push the R button down while you're underwater, you can do sharper turns, and it's very useful to know that. Back when I first played the game, I didn't know you could do that. And, uh... Swimming was a bit of a chore. It's not so much anymore now that I know how to do that. But yeah, by here, break all of these, your boulders. That's right, they have eyes, so we're killing them. Or die, and we'll get another honeycomb piece, which leaves one more for the taking, which is right around here, up this corner. So yeah, everything's pretty straightforward in this area, and trust me, things won't get straightforward later on. It, there's tons, and I mean tons, of stuff you can do. So kill that, kill that cauliflower there, and you get one extra point. But this, this being a collectathon platformer, it means that well. <laughs> You're gonna be collecting a lot. Now, these platformers are the best type in my opinion. These are the ones I always go back to. Banjo and for this is why, for me, this was the big hit of the N64. For a lot of people, it was, say, Mario 64 or something like that. But for me, Banjo-Kazooie all the way. Best. This is 
this is my favorite. Well, either this one or the sequel is my favorite N64 game. But I'll get to I'll get to my thoughts on the sequel when I get to it because it has a couple of uh, issues here and there. Either way, let's head on up to the very top of spiral mounting here and get going on with the plot of the game. Now, there's a lot of collectibles as well, and I'll go over them as we see them, because if I list them all, it'll be like a minute of me just going, Oh, you have to collect this and that and this and that. So yeah, show us the way. Now, if you if you do the tutorial and you try to go up here before finishing the tutorial, uh, this bridge will actually be broken, so you can't go into the Wishes layer until the tutorial is either completed, or you push the B button at the start like I did. Anyway, let's head in. Oh... Oh, the nostalgia. It tingles me so. <laughs> this fine contraption, so I'm told, will make me young and tooty old. Oh, yeah, yeah. Of course we'll come and kill her. We're the main protagonists. Of course we're going to. Oh, I love the I love this game. <laughs> okay. Now this cutscene really doesn't make a difference to anything because nothing happens with it. But if you get a game over, you will actually see, and I might actually show that off on purpose later on. There he is. The fun begins. My tricks and traps will see who wins. But yeah, uh, later on we'll if we actually get a game over, which we probably will. It, which is basically if you die once, you'll see a nice fancy. Actually, no, not if you get a game of when you quit the game. That's the word. When you quit the, uh, yeah, oh, I'll show you later. You'll see what I mean. Either way, this year is a jiggy. Now these are the major MacGuffins of the game. You have to collect all. Well, most of these to get through. These are how you enter each level of the game. You need. They're basically the Mario Brothers stars. So you need to get a hold of them. Otherwise, good luck. So as you can tell, this by here, yeah, this looks like a, a world entrance, but as you can tell, the door's locked. So if you go up here, hmm, a puzzle. So just stand on this here platform, push the A button once he's done doing his lecture. Come on, let me let me push the button. Come on. Yeah, yeah, stop talking. Let me play. <laughs> good God. There we go, push the A button, and there we are. The picture's complete, and the door to Mumbo's Mountain is now open. Now, this is quite possibly... This is, the f this is like the perfect intro level to the game, and how perfect is it? Well, let's go have a little look-see. Push C stick up as well, you can get a first person view, but look at this. It is glorious. And the worlds get much bigger and much better as time goes on. But this is a perfect introduction world. Very not too big, not too small. Everything's pretty much where you need to find it. It's easy to get hold of everything. So this bike here is a Jinjo. Cut if you get all of these in a the level, there's five of them in each level. If you get all of them, you'll gain a jiggy. Now this by here is a mumbo token. If you get a number of a certain number of them, this scattered throughout each of the worlds, you'll get Well, you'll be able to do something with a certain character called Mumble Jumble. Now this is a note. Dear god, so much explanation. Now these notes are how you open up note doors, which are basically blocked passageways in Grunty's castle, and um, you need to collect as many of these as possible. I don't know whether I think you need to get every single one in the game to get everything in the game, so I'm gonna try and get all 100 in each world. There's 100 in each world. Um, but I'm not entirely sure if I'll be able to pull it off. But the interesting fact about those um, notes is that they don't save. When, when, because of the limitations of this game, when you collect all of them, you will, well, you. You collect, all, you collect some in the level, when you exit the level, the, you will just get a higher score based on them, and now those the score will open up the doors. Now, unfortunately, when you go back to the level, though, you need to recollect them again. So, it's very annoying when you... F it's very annoying. I think this problem's fixed in the second one, but it's not that big a deal. 
Anyway, before we tackle our friend up there, we're gonna go over here first. Collecting more notes along the way. Because we need to go and uh, explore a bit, I think, and kill a bunch of ants. Because die, fiend! I love how grotesque it is. You kill them and their eyes just pop out of their bodies and it's just it's so fulfilling. Now, as you, you probably would have noticed Bottle saying earlier that uh, there's molehills scattered around this area, which there's one right there. Now these molehills that are scattered in a couple of the levels, they will give you new moves and trust me, you will want these moves. So let's just talk to them quickly, push the B button next to the molehill. I call this the Breakbuster. So yeah, if you push the A button then the Z button, you will do this game's equivalent of the ground pound, which is glorious. Very glorious. Now, and we're gonna want to use it by here to blow these up. Why? There's a lot of good MacGuffins inside, such as notes and the like. And uh, let's grab this mumbo token here. No, no, I want the mumbo token. There we go. Me, mumbo token. Yes, the mumbo magic. Alright, these eggs here are used for a power we get later on in the game, which allows us to use Kazooie as like a sort of a gun. As you'll see what I mean later on. Oh, hello. Goodbye. Now, you guys might be seeing the frame rate be a bit low, but uh, don't worry, that's the game itself. The game's frame rate is pretty low because this game, it's quite a powerhouse. It's really, this, this one and the sequel really pushes the N64 to its absolute limits. And I'm not complaining about that because this is a brilliant game. An extra one up there. <laughs> Watch me lose them eventually. And there we go. Another, well, the first major jiggy of the level. You must search for ten of us in each world. We'll help you progress through a witch's lair. Ah, oh, glorious. So yeah, when, whenever you want to leave the world as well, you can, uh, you have to go back to the start area down there and leave on the exit pad. I'm not sure if, hold on. Yeah, you can't leave through the pause menu though, because if you leave through the pause menu, it'll count as game over. And uh, you'll see the ending cutscene, which I'll probably show off at the end of this part, actually. But first, let's go up into this eye and get another jiggy. Alright, this first world won't take too long to complete, because it's obviously the first world. Um, I don't think... Can you even get on top of this? No, I don't think you can get on top of this skull. We'll enter the skull later on. But first, let's move over here to this here walkway. Why? We're about to get another power! Oh my goodness! Now this power is um, very, very bloody useful to have. Well, by useful, I mean it's just more convenient. Like, if you're like me, it'll be, it's a nice way to get around quicker. I'll probably usually not use it too much, but it's nice to have. The Talon Trot. It allows us to tackle deep, tackle slopes with ease. So if you hold down the Z button and push the left C stick button, oh, fucking GameCube pad, then... Banjo's gonna have a nice little rest, and it's up to Kazooie to trot us around. He's faster, but sometimes I just prefer beat Banjo, because this game... I don't like to rush so much in this game. It's it's a... it's a Clyde Cl Thorne platforms aren't meant to be played fast. They're meant to be played at your own pace, I seem to think. Either way, it's pop up here. You can't go up that slope normally. Collect all these, and get a hold of another Jiggy. Well, Jinjo, and... No None of more mumbo token down there. We'll grab that in a bit. Yippee! So, you need to get the first 50 notes in this level, otherwise, you won't be able to progress past the stage later on. So, the notes are required, folks, but I won't worry. Alright, so f now let's go over yonder. Collect all these, y these your delectable notes. And another Jinjo! And a Jiggy! Oh, we're making good progress, but this won't last long, folks, trust me. I might know parts of this game through and through, but other parts of it, like certain collectibles, like, I won't know, so... Because I am playing this game properly since I tried recording it for the herd comms. And I did get 100% on the herd comms playthrough, apart from... A bit of issues here and there involving... TikTok clock? Not TikTok. The woods. I, what's it called? The woods level. I can't remember the name of the woods level, but I had issues with the woods level. Let's just say that. Anyway, down here, he's gonna throw these oranges at you. Basically, you stand under the platforms and move whenever you hear the noise. 
There we go. There's another Jiggy for us. Out of you. Alright, there's five. There's half of them in this world, so now let's just grab this your orange. I don't care if it's your orange, it's mine now, bitch. Alright, so let's just lob this here. So then this here monkey that totally doesn't look like Diddy Kong. Well, move out the way. Somehow that monkey was heavy enough to hold a jiggy and crush that platform. I don't know how he was that heavy. I'd rather not question it. So uh, there's the sixth one. We're not quite done yet. As you can probably tell by these, the next molehill is going to be Kazooie's egg ability. So let's talk to him. Boop. The ancient ways of the egg. <laughs> Genius. So if you hold the Z button down or push the top C button, you'll shoot an egg from your mouth. If you hold it down, Z, if you hold, press down the, the down C button, then, well, yeah, it sounds painful. <laughs> and we have a hundred eggs we can t contr we can hold in total, so don't worry. And plus, he gives us fifty free, so it's all right. And that's all of the power. All the moves he teaches us in this world, but before we use the eggs to our advantage, which we will in a sec, we'll move up over here because this by here is uh, something you might that something that's required. Boop. There we go. Now those switches will open up jiggies to be collected in the actual castle. So uh, find those switches and hit them whenever you do, and. Rem you have to memorize where the location of the jiggies is. Anyway, time to fight this thing. Now, this thing's really, really easy to fight. Just hit him, then jump. Simple. Wee. Wee. Ouch. You oh, you got me. Wait, what the hell? Why are you not... Why aren't you getting hit, good sir? There we go, that, that was weird. <laughs> so with that we got ourselves another Jiggy! Who the thank that? Okay, let's get going. I love that jingle, by the way. Always have, always will. So now you might be wondering, hang on. We've been just about everywhere, haven't we? Nope, not quite yet. Let's still place this go. Now move out of my way, good sir, you bull. You could say he's quite a bully. Oh! <laughs> I'm sorry, don't hurt me. But a um, couple more notes over yonder. We're getting pretty close to the note limit now. So it won't be long. There's another Jiggy right by here. Actually, yeah. <laughs> There's Jiggy number eight. So let's collect more of these. Now... As you remember, there was honeycomb pieces earlier on. There's some. There's gonna be one right over there. I'll pick it up as we're leaving, though, because we don't need it right away. And there's things I want to do first. Actually, did I pick up the mumble token? I don't think I did. I'll go grab that now. <laughs> God, I'll keep forgetting about things in my day. Wait. Okay, I did get it. Never mind then. That's just my bad. My bad indeed. So now that we've got eight, we've got two more Jiggies left to get. Now the next Jiggy is easy and then we're on the, on the last one. So this Jiggy by here, basically shoot eggs into his mouth and it'll blow him up. Wee choo choo, mumbo topan, Paul, feed us with nice blue stone. So, but this last one by here, don't, don't throw an egg into his mouth. You want to jump on it and then get the honeycomb. Right now, boop. Another Jiggy is ours! Alright, with that, now I think it's time to actually vi pay a visit to our friend Mumbo himself to see what he has to talk about. Alright, so we have four. We're gonna need five Mumbo tokens, I believe. I know what the last one is, so I, I made him derp. Me and Mumbo, best shaman in all game. Can help Banjo and Filthy Feathered One. What do you mean, Filthy? Bitch, I mean, I'm not filthy, I'm fabulous! <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, I know, I have, I'm, 
Can you just say Banjo not good enough token? Okay. Either way, we'll go back to him in a second. I'm going to show you guys where to get the last Mumba token that I forgot to pick up because I'm an idiot. It is over. See this giant spire here? It's inside here. No, I'm not in. I have to enter and leave this because we can't actually traverse this as normal Banjo. This is the reason why we actually need Mumbo. So let's just move up here. Gonna need Kazooie for the for you. There we go. Five of them. Now even Kazooie can climb up this tower. So yeah, don't try, because uh, there's no point. <laughs> just move on up. Talk to our good friend Mumbo and uh, see what he has to give us. Now he's not in every level in the game, but uh, he's in. Pretty much most of them, I believe. So, stand on this your pad, push the B button, and be amazed at the glorious particle effects. Seriously, I used to think that, I, I still think this transformation is epic. I, I don't know, I, I just always been impressed by that. But yeah, now we have become a termite. Yeah. <laughs> don't worry though, we need this termite, so don't fret. Now why do we need the termite? Well, termites, they they pretty much they can climb up nearly anything, which is why we're going in the spire now. Because these termites are the only thing that can actually climb up the spire. Alright, let's go. Uh, oh, the guy's... I thought the guy respawned. Okay, I guess he's dead now. Now, some of the, some of the ter other termites around here, I killed the mance earlier. Well, um, have a little bit of windy banter to say to you, based on the fact that you have like a backpack and stuff, so let's see if this one says anything up here. When did you get those shorts? I want them! I think that's kind of witty, I like it. Uh, but be careful, the camera's kind of, kind of frustrating at times in here, but you shouldn't have to worry too much. Get out of my way. No, it's my backpack, bitch. <laughs> But yeah, we go out here, and we're at the very top of the spire with a brilliant view of the world, actually. Nice extra life there if you want to risk getting it. It's quite easy to fall out, so I'd say be careful, but... That's all ten of them. I love that fanfare. But now that we've got all ten in this world, it's time to head on off to the next area of the game. By the way, I must say, you suffer fall damage. Hold on, do I have all 97? Ah, I missed three. I think I know where they are. I think. Oh, by the way, the draw distance in this game is very low. Have fun finding stuff. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. Three, I'll find it eventually, no. Oh, get the hell away from you, bull. Uh, nothing down there. Alright, so. While I'm searching for that, did I go in there and grab the. Oh, God, this LP is a mess. I can't remember what I did like a five seconds ago. Alright, before we leave, though, I'm gonna wanna try and get hold of um, three more notes. I think they might be up on this pathway, if I'm right. Right? I'm wrong. Okay, it must be on, or on here somewhere. Oh, there they are. So there's the hundred notes of the first level of the game. There we go. So we've pretty much completed everything in this world, give or take. I mean, let's just view our totals. Yep, that's this world complete. Fifteen minutes, not bad time actually. The the worlds will probably take longer after this point, but let's get out, grab the next jiggy, and then I shall call it a part. We. <laughs> it's a brilliant game though, I'd, I'd be surprised if no one, none of you ever played it, and if you haven't played it, why not? Twinkle! <laughs> I love the animations and stuff with the particle effects, they're really nice. But yeah, if you walk too far away from the world in your transform state, you will also lose the transformation, so be careful there. And yeah, let's just move on up here. Jiggy number two. So I'm going to head across to the next world now. Shut up, termite. And, um... Why can't I move? Oh, right, that's why he's going to explain. But, um, once I get to the next... I'm going to get to the next world now, open it up, and then I'll call it a part. 
cow, Ryan Akissa. But you also need Kazooie's uh, running ability to get up this hill. Fortunately, the abilities are actually free in this one, unlike in the second game, so you don't have too much to worry about. Hey, what's... Oh, Balls is just going to explain the North Doors to us, and... My game's crashed. Oh, uh, Nintendo! Okay, fine. I'll call the video an end here. So thank you guys for watching, hope you enjoyed. And uh, if you enjoyed, please be sure to leave a comment and like the video. And I'll see you guys next time. Thanks, hope, thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed. Bye!